what's going on everyone in this video i want to talk to you guys about why absolutely why taking losses and being a loser as a trader is actually a good thing now before i kick off into this video i want to tell you guys i have two spots available in evolutiontraders.com what is evolutiontraders.com it's an online community with other traders who are sitting around the round table trading each and every single day live you get access to myself as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as my watch list intraday levels so forth and so forth as well as my video content that i produce that is not on youtube kind of outlining my strategy now getting into this video let's talk about the reason why being a loser or becoming a loser is a good thing in trading so I'm gonna first start all the way back, right? As humans, as, you know, as the way we have evolved over time, nobody wants to lose. Nobody wants to be considered a loser, be called the loser. Nobody wants to have that stress and anxiety of not winning. It doesn't matter. I'm not just talking about trading, I'm talking about in life. I'm talking about your personal relationships, your work relationships, you know, the goals that you set for yourself. Nobody wants to lose. And this is why trading has sucked in so many people all these years that put money in, put money in, put money in. Maybe they take a little bit out here. Maybe they take a little bit out there, but they are not consistent. They're not able to do this on a day in and day out basis. Maybe they have a hot run for six months and then, you know, they blow their account up in one month and you never see them again. So what am I getting at here? As a human, the way that our brain works, okay, there's two sides to the brain. There's a logical side, which we're gonna call the thinking side. The thinking part of our brain is what allows us to look at a chart, for example, understand that there's a downtrend, assess our risk, tell ourselves, well, if I just would have got in here, I would have made this amount of money. If I just would have sold out and, and, and respected my stop loss, I only would have lost this much money, okay? That's the reasonable side of your brain. That's the thinking part, okay? However, the big part of your brain is the emotional part of your brain. As humans, everything is run. All of our actions play out on emotions, okay? So the emotional side of your brain is actually what's pulling the, the, the strings of the thinking side of the brain. The thinking side of the brain only gives just a little piece, a little nudge to the emotional side. So when you're first starting off looking at the chart and you're ready to get into a trade, you're very calm, you understand what you're supposed to do. As soon as you click buy, the emotional side of the brain starts to take over and that's when you start to feel FOMO, you start to get stressed, you feel anxiety, you start breaking rules, because at this point in time, the emotional side of your brain starts to kick in and take over, okay? So it's too powerful for the thinking side of the brain to kind of counter, counteract what's going on with the emotional side. So what I'm trying to get at here is we cannot control the emotional part of our brain. We're humans. We are going to be emotional. We are going to have those emotions. We are going to need to learn how to deal with and work with the emotional side of the brain from the thinking part of our brain. And the first thing that we need to understand is that we're going to lose and we're going to lose a lot and we're going to lose again and we're going to lose more. But it's a probabilities based business this trading is. So we have to understand that we're not always going to be on the right side of the probability. Some of you guys may have been to a point where you feel like, you know, you can't catch a win, you can't buy a win if your life depended on it, okay? That just means that you're on the wrong side of the probabilities. It's just like when you're in Las Vegas and they're spinning uh, the ball around the roulette wheel. Sometimes it's gonna be landing on red, sometimes it's gonna be landing on black, and there's other times, very few times, it's gonna land on green. So you have to stick to a particular strategy. And just like in Las Vegas, they know the average gambler is gonna jump from putting $100 on red to then putting $100 on black 
to then maybe hedging their position and putting a little bit of money on green. And over time, the casino is going to win because they know the average gambler, the average person is not going to withstand either bankroll wise, meaning they're not gonna have enough chips to continue to play out the probabilities and continue to be consistent with what they are betting on. So for example, if you play roulette and you're a black player or a red player, you need to absolutely put your chips on red each and every single time, or you're going to be on the wrong side of the probability by jumping from here to there. I hope that's starting to make a little bit of sense. I want to quickly point out something here on this chart why being a loser this morning could have turned you into a very, very profitable winner. It actually just took a trade myself on the NQ short, took it for around $260. If you guys watched my video from yesterday, you saying that you've seen that I made about $250 yesterday. Now, mind you, that's not a lot of money, but yesterday in the video, I already did the breakdown eight hours times $20 an hour at a normal, you know, kind of job across America. And even that's a little high for some states, but $20 an hour times eight hours a day is $160 a day. So if you're able to pull 150, 160, 200, 250 a day, you're on pace, you're on pace for making a salary between 35 and $45,000 a year income to your whatever it is that you already do. So if you work a full-time job, you can add an extra 30 to $40,000 to your bottom line by just following your simple strategy, respecting your rules, understanding that the thinking part of the brain needs to work with the emotional side of the brain and not let the emotional side of the brain take over the thinking and the logical part of your brain. It's very, very serious and it's very, very meticulous when you get down to why we do the things we do as traders so let's look at the play right off the bell if you look at the market open here at 6 30 a.m pacific standard time you can see that we bust through all these short-term levels of supply here on a five minute time frame and we actually break to the top side here which looks like a phenomenal long right off the open now what are we waiting for in this particular situation we're waiting for the top wick to get confirmed which happens 10 minutes later at 6 40 a.m pacific standard time and guess what happens shortly after that no continuation, no follow through. Nine out of 10 traders that are following this strategy would have taken this setup long. Nine out of 10 or 10 out of tr 10 traders would have lost money on this trade. But that is the name of the game. And so many traders, the first thing that they're going to do is look to the setup, look to the strategy, look at themselves and say, what did I do wrong? Maybe I should have done this. Maybe I could have done that. There's nothing different that you could have done. The setup was there. The setup was clean. Guess what? You fell on the wrong side of probabilities. Just like if you go to the, the Vegas table and you look at the board and you see that the, the, the color black on roulette has been hitting you know, the last one, two, three, four, five times. You can see the digital board. You can see how many times that the dealer has rolled on the black side. And what do you do? You come down, you put your money on black, and it's red. You're just on the wrong side of the probability. There's nothing wrong with the system. There's nothing wrong with you as a trader. There's nothing wrong in this situation. The only thing that you need to understand is that you were on the wrong side of the probability. And as a trader, as a disciplined trader, you will have assessed your risk prior. You're not going to be over leveraged. You're not gonna be sitting long off the bell, 20 mini contracts getting blown out for thousands and thousands of dollars. Your risk is always going to be the same. You're playing small. You're playing for these base hits. You're playing to keep the lights on. You're, you're playing to continue to do this on a day in and day out basis. So guess what? So you get into this trade here, it goes up a couple of handles and immediately starts to pull back. Now, this is where as a trader, we need to assess our risk. Where is our stop loss going to be? I preach and I preach and I preach, let's use a one bar stop. If we were to use a one bar stop on this opening range candle bar, that's 50 handles. Even if you're playing micro contracts, that might be way too much risk for you to take on right off the bell. So automatically off the bell, you need to assess this trade and tell yourself, is this trade even worth it for me? And if it is worth it, because I will be completely honest, I would have taken this long trade 
as well but I would not have gave, given myself 50 points. So instead of putting my stop loss down here as a one bar stop, I'm going to adjust my strategy a little bit so I can protect myself as a trader and protect my capital as a business. So what I'm going to do is use the shortest term sentiment moving average, your power trending moving average, which is the five SMA on a five minute time frame. This green line that you see here that I'm gonna go over and highlight in pink, I'm gonna use this line, this moving average as my stop loss. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna tell myself, if we confirm here, which we did 10 minutes off the open, but we fail the move to break out to the high side, okay, and we come back down, if we lose my short-term power trending moving average, which is here 10 minutes off your open, or off your entry, I have to get out of the trade because as a trader, I understand that I'm gonna be on the right side of probabilities and I'm gonna be on the wrong side of probabilities. So in this particular case, if your entry was somewhere around the price of 15,886, your loss, your stop would have been somewhere around 15,872. So let's call it around 15 handles, 10 handles, 12 handles. That's a paper cut. We understand that from the thinking side of our brain, we're not going to let our emotional side kind of take over and start to revenge trade this and start to panic and start to over leverage on our next trade. All we are simply going to do is relax, take a deep breath, understand that this trade is over and now immediately look for the next setup. We're gonna forget about the previous trade and this is why being a loser is going to turn you into a winner over and over and over and over again. Because if you just would have waited another 10 minutes, you see a beautiful, beautiful power red candle that then closes below the 20 SMA here and gives you an entry price of around 15,818. If the next candle confirms, we're going to jump this play short. And let me bring up my drawing tool. This beautiful red candle becomes our reason why candle. This becomes our pivot. This confirmation candle becomes our entry, okay? Now, just like in the situation when we took the long here and got stopped out underneath the power trending SMA, we're going to do the same for the short position. So if our entry is gonna come under here, this is our power trending SMA. We can wick above it, we can trade at it, we can trade below it. As long as we do not get a five minute candle close over it, we are going to remain in the short position. Again, your absolute hard stop to save and protect your ass and protect your account size, even if it's 30 or 40 or 50 handles higher, is a one bar stop. Your trailing stop for managing your position is going to be this five SMA, okay? It's going to be the five SMA. So for example, here's our hard, hard stop. Here is our trailing managing moving average. Here is our entry. Here's the entry candle. So this is the reason why candle. Here's our pivot. This is our entry candle. And we can do this bounciness action but we can continue to ride this trade all the way down until we close over our moving average. Now, if we look at that and we just allow that to play out and we respect our rules and we be systematic and we allow our thinking side of the brain to coexist with the emotional side of the brain, we are not still even thinking about the first trade of the day here. We're not thinking about the 10 to 15 handle loss that we took on the first part of the day. What we are thinking about now is finding the next setup and the next setup comes at 15, 817, 15, 816. And if we just allow the charts to show us what the hell to do, we would have essentially written this down and been able to take profits 
all the way down. If you look at it here, you can see we go from a price in five minutes of 15,817. We come to a price of 15,800, which is 17 points. So if you're playing between 10 and 15 points, you probably were taking profits here. We get a little bit of a bounce here. Now, if you're still in the trade, now you're going to be break even, which is completely fine because still here, we're not losing on this trade. We still have not closed over the five SMA power trend. Then you can see the next candle confirms and goes down to a price of 15. 15, 7, 8, 3. So now we are already talking about 25, 30 points profitable here on the NASDAQ futures. If you just look at the next candle, next candle comes down to 15, 7, 6, 5. We are talking about almost 50 points, guys, in a matter of 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes. This is why being a losing trader off the bat of those 10 to 15 handles could have resulted into a winning trader of at least 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 points this move actually had continuation from 817 all the way down to 700 over 115 handles on the nasdaq flush from a time of seven o'clock in the morning pacific standard time all the way down to 735 115 handles in 35 minutes this is why becoming a losing trader is going to help you be one of the best winning traders that you can possibly be. When you understand that the logical side of the brain, the thinking side of the brain, the brain that allows you to look at the chart after the market is closed and find a million setups and tell yourself, well, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you stop out here? That side of the brain needs to re to live and coexist with the emotional part of the brain, which is actually the controller of your physicals and of your actions, okay? I hope that makes sense. The emotional side of your brain actually controls what actions you are doing as a human. The thinking part of the brain is only a small piece. This is the piece that we need to focus on. This is the piece that we need to listen to. And this is the piece that is going to be, allow us to work with the emotional side of the brain to allow us to not let this trade get in our heads, not let it break our confidence down, not let us believe that we're a bad trader, not let us believe that we need to go double our size on the next trade, not let us to believe to flip bias and go a different direction just because we got stopped out. We have to relax and we have to coexist with both sides of the brain. And if you just would have understood that, you could have caught close to 100 points. As the day rolls on and we start to chop around sideways, you'll notice here that you do have a setup to the long side here for about 10 to 15 points. You have a setup here for about 10 to 15 points as well. These two trades need to be ignored, okay? And you're gonna learn this with experience, but these two trades need to be ignored just due to the fact that we have identified now that the day's trend is down. And all this is, is just a dead cat bounce for the next leg down, okay? So if anything, if anything, the next trade that you would be looking for would have been here if confirmed, but it does not. So your next entry would have been here. And that price came at a price and time of around 9.15 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and goes from an entry price of around 15.745 all the way down to a price of 16.88, right? Or 15.688. So we are talking about here from 15.746 down to 15,688 in a matter of 15 minutes. So we're talking about another over 40 to 60 point move in a matter of 15 minutes. This was your second trade. These trades get ignored. This was your baby trade here. This was your granddaddy trade. This is the trade that allows you to turn off the computer screens. This first trade that would have stopped you out, okay, this trade that would have stopped you out is part of the game. If you can't understand that this is part of the game, then you're never going to be allowed to catch these moves. I hope that makes sense. If you guys wanna trade with me, you guys wanna start understanding more psychology aspects of trading and how you can tame the beast and how you guys can make money on a consistent basis. You guys wanna trade with me, whether you wanna trade futures, you wanna trade for a prop firm or options, 
join evolutiontraders.com, join the team, become a lifetime member, access. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. I'm waiting on you.